Okay, so let's let's get started. I got the okay, so the stream is on. Uh, thank you for uh, braving the early hour and showing up at 8:15 uh, for this workshop. This is the second uh, iteration of our smooth games optimization and machine learning workshop series. We started last year uh, at NeurIPS again in Montreal, and we're continuing this year. And uh, I will spend about 10 minutes now um, giving you some background information and the scope of this workshop and a little bit of, of motivation. The main motivation uh, behind uh, our, our reasoning for following this research direction and for uh, exploring the, the available uh, literature and uh, this, this work is um, a certain, let's say, resurgence of adversarial formulations in machine learning. So we see them in generative models. Uh, we see them in uh, domain transfer uh, formulations. We see them in some reinforcement learning applications. Um, and there is a certain, let's say, dearth of knowledge in the machine learning community of the right tools to use for, for these kinds of problems. So the main message is uh, these are not classic optimization problems. So we cannot use classic methods designed for optimization problems, OK? So we need to bring together the communities that know about these tools. So that's, the, that's, that's where we're going with this. And I'll start with a little anecdote from, uh, from the machine learning literature. And it's the, it starts with generative adversarial networks as a lot of, uh, uh, I guess, a lot of work and a lot of recent enthusiasm around uh, games and around adversarial formulations in machine learning. So I will not uh, fully describe what a, what a GAN is. Uh, because all of you have seen it, I'm certain, and that's not the scope of this, of this introduction. Um, but the very first uh, formulation uh, for, for what's called a GAN uh, is this formulation uh, shown here. We have two agents. One is called the generator. The other is called the discriminator. It's a min-max problem. Also can be described as a zero-sum game. Okay? It's an adversarial formulation. And it's behind a number of uh, exciting, let's say, developments. Uh, so this very first formulation um, is a zero-sum game, as we discussed. And it was introduced in, in 2014. And it was given the name. It was baptized uh, with the name Saturating GAN. The reason for that is the, the hypothesis of the authors for the reasons why it does not work. Okay, so this very first formulation did not work. And the, the hypothesis was that the, this formulation saturates, is in the, the gradients become small, so you cannot converge to a solution. Um, so the authors of the same paper ended up introducing an alternative formulation, which is not shown here. It's still an adversarial formulation, but it's not zero sum. Okay, and they call it non-saturating GANs. So this was a fix because non-saturating GANs work. Uh, you just run gradient descent, ascent, plus momentum, and they were able to get some very, very nice results for this, uh, for this first attempt, right? But if someone studies the trend on, uh, you know, in the literature for, for GAN papers, in particular, and all the variants, the many, many, many variants that came up after that, uh, we see a certain trend in the momentum values used in the experimental sections of those papers. So over the years, momentum started from 0 0.9, which was optimal for optimization problems, right? It's the magical number that we have for optimization problems. But then you will see that over the years, uh, the experimentalist kept turning that knob lower and lower and lower until they reached zero at some point. And it's an interesting um, uh, trend to observe. So then you start thinking, maybe momentum is bad for games, right? This is a game formulation. Maybe that's what's happening. Maybe momentum is bad. And uh, indeed, it can be shown that positive momentum is bad for games. Actually, negative momentum can help. And um, it actually fixes the saturating GAN. 
if you use a negative momentum uh, hyperparameter, the saturating GAN works. You can get results. You can get images out of it, uh, which was not uh, possible by using the traditional tuning that you have for optimization problems. So then you start uh, thinking beyond that. Uh, what, what is the issue, right? So uh, my understanding of how things have been evolving in the machine learning community is the machine learning community has been adapting their models and their formulations until they work for gradient descent ascent. So I have, I have a formulation, gradient descent ascent doesn't work for it, so I'm going to change my formulation until gradient descent ascent works. And that's, that's the step from saturating to non-saturating GANs, for example. Um, the alternative would be for us to explore the methods that are right for the right formulation. Okay, so in this case, the saturating GAN can be made to work with the right method. Um, negative momentum is an improvement, but maybe there's something beyond gradient descent ascent, right? Maybe gradient descent ascent is not the right thing for games. Well, no doy, says Korpelovich, uh, 50 years ago. Uh, we have much better methods for those things. One, one is called the extra gradient method, right? Which is designed for this kind of uh, dynamics, for saddle point problems, uh, etc. So the realization is like that we, the reason we started going in this direction is the realization that um, most of us in the machine learning community were not familiar with some of those results, right? So. We started last year uh, inviting some experts from game theory, uh, from uh, numerical optimization, that are the right people to, to give us uh, their thoughts and their suggestions and their prescriptions as to what are the right numerical methods, rather than ju just using gradient descent ascent, and try to explore what are the, the missing pieces in literature in terms of deterministic uh, formulations, stochastic formulations, variance reduction, uh, lower bounds, and fundamental limits, and things like that. And we're continuing this year along the same trajectory, uh, but we're adding uh, another, another element. So this was kind of a summary of what we focused on in last year's workshop. Um, so we want to bring together three different communities, machine learning, mathematical programming, and uh, the game theory community, if possible. And we're interested in understanding the interplay between games and ML, um, in particular uh, games in machine learning, and sometimes machine learning in games, uh, but also rediscovering and uh, really getting a better understanding of all that old literature that we had been ignoring that we need to be aware of. Um, this year, so this is just a summary of problems and formulations that uh, we found, find relevant, differential, differentiable games, variational inequality, saddle point problems, min-max optimization, that uh, similar problems come with different names and then slight variations in different communities, so it's hard sometimes to identify all the relevant literature. Um, this year, we're also trying to add some of some, let's say, weight to applications, and to, especially to connections with deep learning, if possible. Um, so we, we will have some talks on applications of games in ML, and um, we were particularly hoping to identify, uh, basically, uh, forward-looking problems of interest to the NeurIPS community, okay? Um, before I just give you the quick summary of the rest of this day, I would like to thank the technical program committee, all of our reviewers that contributed reviews to, the, to our submissions. We ended up with uh, about 30 contributed posters and, and talks. So thank you all for your, for your work and your contributions here. And this is our, our schedule for this morning. Uh, we have two invited talks and two contributed talks. At 19, we will also do like a quick poster spotlight, where poster presenters will give a quick summary of their results and invite us to their posters, okay? And at 12.30, we will break for lunch. Uh, all, the schedule is on the website as well. And uh, I will show you again later the, the afternoon schedule. So let's, let's go to our first speaker, and I will invite 
Eva Tardos uh, on the stage. And let me disconnect this. So for a quick introduction, I don't know that she needs an introduction, and I needed my notes in order to remember all of the uh, affiliations. A member of the National Academy of Engineering, 